Hi everyone, welcome back to part 2 of this Spline Mesh tutorial. In the previous part, we went over how to set things up and create a panning material. In this part, we will go over how to create the blueprint for the Spline Mesh. So let's start off by right clicking and creating a blueprint class. And we'll select the Arc Actor. And I'm going to name this as BP underscore Spline Example. Okay, now let's go into the blueprint. Within the blueprint, we want to add a spline component. So click on the add icon and then search for spline. And we don't want a spline mesh, we just want a spline. So let's add that in. If you would like to change the name of the spline, you could do so. I'm just going to leave it as spline, All right? So what a spline is, it's simply a line that can be drawn, shaped, or extended by using a number, certain number of points. And these points can be created accordingly to the specific needs by the user, which is you, right? If you ever use like Photoshop or Illustrator, it's like using a pen tool. So, or if you like animate it in like uh, 3D software like Maya or like Blender, it's kind of like editing the animation using the graph editor, right? In order to put our mesh on the spine, we will need to use the construction script. So let's head over to the construction window. So the construction script is very handy when you want to make something procedurally and in this case it's our spline mesh that we are trying to create. Okay so let's start by taking the spline component into the graph and we need to get the number of points that we have in the spline. Let's drag out the pin and then search for get number of spline points over here. Now we need a for loop to have the construction script to cycle through every point so we can add in the mesh into the system. So let's drag out from the construction script and search for a for loop at the flow control over here. For the first index, we want to set as zero, so keep it as zero since we want to take an account of the first point of the spline. And for the last index, we need to get the number of the spline points and subtract it by 2. So I'll drag out a pin and search for subtract and change the number into 2. And then link that up to the last index. That's basically the general condition that we're going to use for the for loop. Why do we need to subtract by 2? That's because in programming, counting starts at 0 most of the times, and it doesn't start at 1. So with the default spline right now, there are 2 points. and if we get the number of spline points into the last index, it's going to be 2. So the loop will go from 0, 1, 2, which is a total of 3 loops. So we will need to take 1 out of the loop to match the number of points. And what about the other one? that we, Didn't we subtract by 2? Well, that's because we don't want to have the spline mesh to appear at the last point. So if I subtract the number by 2, then the mesh won't be spawned at the last point of the spline. And that's why we need to subtract the number of spline points by 2. Now the next step is we need to add in our spline mesh. So let's drag out from the loop body and then search for spline mesh. Yep, so we can add the spline mesh component. And what this node does is that it creates a mesh that can be used for the spline. With the add spline mesh component node selected, we can go to the details panel and go to static mesh. And over there, we can choose the mesh that you're going to use, which is the plane that I'm going to use for the spine mesh. And for the material, I'm just going to choose the panning arrow material that we made in the first part of our tutorial over here. Back in the construction script, let's drag out from the return value. And we need to set a forward axis for the mesh. So let's search for forward axis. For this node, it will ask you for a forward direction on either the X, Y, or Z. And to check your forward axis for the mesh, we can go to our mesh itself, and then go to, if we open up our mesh, and then look at the lower left axis icon over here, then we can determine which like axis the mesh is facing. And for me, my forward axis will be at the X. So I'm going to keep it at X. And the next thing to do is to determine the start and end for the spline mesh. Drag out from the return value and then search for set start and end. Then connect the node from the set forward axis. 
And for this node, you will see there are four different vector variables that we will need, and they are used for determining the start and end points of the spline mesh component and to control the bends of the spline. Okay, what to do next is we need to get the position of the spline points into the start position and the end position. So let's grab the spline component into the graph and search for a get location at spline point. Add that in, and I'm going to move this whole thing to the left a bit. Okay, next up, we're going to grab the index from the for loop and then plug it into the point index of the get location at spline point. And then plug the return value into the start position. All right, so next up is the start tangent. And it's pretty much the same thing. We just need to drag out from the spline and then search for a get tangent at spline point. And then same thing, let's plug that index bad boy into the point index and then connect the return value into the start tangent. For the end position, we'll need to get the position of the next point. So to get this, we simply need to add one from the index. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, so drag out from the index and then search for a plus sign to make a, oops, sorry, plus sign to do add. And from this add node, I will change the zero into a one. The next thing is to get a location and the tangent of the spline point. So it's pretty simple, pretty much just copy and paste what we have for the start position. And then link up the spine component into the target of the get location and get tangent and get the index with the addition node that we have into the point index. And then it's just simply get the return value into the end position and the end tangent. Compile and save, and that's pretty much it for creating a spine mesh. Now let's go back to the main viewport and then put pull in our BP spine example into the scene. And at first it might be kind of short. Um, you can change that by clicking on the white, white dot over here and then you can extend it to make it longer. If you want to add in a new segment, all you have to do is hold down Alt and then drag out the from the point and then they'll make a new segment like that. Yep, so that's pretty much it for creating the spline itself and how you can pretty much just tweak it and shape it however you want using the points and you can add in more points if you would really need to as well. All right, so next up, I will teach you guys how to create parameters into the details panel so we can more easily change the color, speed, and the glow of the panning material. Let's head back into the blueprint. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move all these to the right a bit so I can get more space. And I'm going to organize these a bit more, so I'll just kind of fast forward a bit, bear with me. All right, now that's organized, I'm going to drag out from the add spline mesh component and then search for a create dynamic material instance. And there's going to be two of them. We want the one that has the primitive component. And with this node, we can change the source material into the material that we are using, which is the panning arrow right here. And for the element index, we can leave it at zero since we only have the one material in the mesh that we're using. Now drag out from the material instance and then we can search for a set vector parameter value. Keep in mind there's also two of them and the one that we want is the target is material instance dynamic, that one. So let's add it in. And for the parameter name, let's use color. Be sure that the name is just exactly the same as the one that is in the material. And for the value, we can promote that to a variable. And then we can name the variable into a color. And this will be the parameter that we will use to change the color for the spline mesh. And in order to use this parameter in the editor, we need to check the instance editable. And if you want to key it in the sequencer, have the exposed to cinematics checked. Let's compile and save. Oh, there's error. Let's see. My bad, I forgot to put the return value into the target. So we need to do that for 
both of these nodes. Compile and save, and that should fix the issue. All right, going back to the viewport, we can see that the color is black. That's because the parameter color over here in details panel is black. So if we change the color, it should change the color of the spline mesh, like so. So if I change green, yellow, it would update the color of the spline mesh. Cool. Let's go back in the blueprint to add in more parameters. And first, I'm going to change the color by default into a another color. So let's say maybe like a orange. And then if we go back into the material, we can see that we need a glow parameter for glow and parameter for the speed. So let's go back into the blueprint and let's add that in. I'm going to move these two to the right a bit more so I can get more space. I'll drag out from the vector parameter value and then search for set scalar parameter value. Again, there are two of them and you want the material instance dynamic. And this is pretty much the same as the vector parameter value. So our parameter name will use glow and the value can promote it to a variable. Name it as glow. And then click on the instance editable. And if you want, you can click on the expose to cinematic as well. So now we have the glow parameter for. Oh, yeah. And also remember to put in the return value into target. Okay. So now we can control the glow using the details parameters, like so. And if I turn off the glow, you will see that the glow is increasing like we want it to. So that's how you do it. Okay, now, so for the speed, it's going to be a bit different since right now it's a constant two vector, right? So if we change this into a parameter, it's going to be a vector parameter. And if we want to change the speed, then we got to change the RGBA, which will become kind of finicky to change. So it's not the best way to do it. What we could do though, is we could use a multiply and a scalar parameters. So let's go ahead and search for a multiply node. And then link that up to B, link the result to speed. And then for A, we can add in a scalar parameter and then name this as speed. And then link that up to A. And now I'll change the divide value into one. So basically we are multiplying the constant two vector to change the speed of the panning material. All right, so let's go back to the blueprint. And same thing, we're going to set another scatter parameter value. So let's search for that. And then first things first, let's just um, get the return value into the targets first. And then I'm going to promote the value to a variable and name this as speed. All right, and then for the parameter name, I'm going to name that as speed as well. All right, and then I'm going to change the default value of speed into one. Okay, and that should be it. Now let's go. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot to, sorry. Yeah, remember to check the instance editable and if you want to expose to somatic. And that should do it. So now we have the speed parameter and the details and we can change the speed of the panning material to very fast if you want. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, you can all tweak around the numbers and maybe even go to negative. So it will go backwards. Yep. Okay, so that's all I have for this tutorial. I'm sure there are more advanced spine mesh you could do. But for this tutorial, I'm just trying to keep it as simple as possible. Hope you guys learned something new and enjoy watching this tutorial. Never stop learning and thank you for watching.